what's going on everybody so the time's finally come for that truck that this motor originally come out of to finally start getting some work done on it if you don't already know we got a 5.3 it's been sitting over there waiting on it for a while now but uh we're about to get her drug out i'm gonna get my other truck back up here so we can load her in the back of the truck that way in the morning when i get up run up to the car wash and uh clean the motor off real good and then we're gonna come back to the house bolt the transmission up and of course i gotta move a couple cars there out of the way get that orange truck pulled up here and we're gonna try to get the motor and transmission drop down in her but first need to get the c10 here out of the way so let's go ahead and do that i seen a few of y'all's comments too talking about the fuel pump why it might be making the noise it is a lot of people talking about oh the tank might be low on gas causing it to make racket and another thing is just just a stock tank you know so it's not like a fuel cell where it's gravity feed you just got a regular pickup in it so it's got to pick it up out of the tank so that's more strain on it and another guy was talking about the fittings on the fuel pump i had to change one of them because it was leaking fuel or spraying fuel out the one side there so might need to change the other one it might be sucking air which that makes sense so i'm gonna change that fitting out and uh obviously i'm gonna put some more gas in it because i plan on driving it up to the car wash so maybe one of those will be the solution to the uh, fuel pump making all that damn racket. Right, let's see if she'll crank. If I loaded it up now, I'd have to uncover it, load it up, and then cover it all back up again. So I think instead of doing that, I'll save a little bit of work and just wait until in the morning. That way I only got to uncover it once, and I ain't got to cover it back up. Work, work smarter, not harder. All right, well, next day, got the motor out here. Went ahead and pulled some of the parts that were still on it off of it. Had a little bit of oven cleaner I found. Just went ahead and sprayed on it. That stuff helps a lot in getting the daggum grime and oil and crap that's been on there for years off. But unfortunately, I run out, so didn't really get this side too good. But about to get her loaded up, find something to plug all these holes with, and then uh, head to the car wash, get her cleaned up, because she is nasty. Got the motor loaded up. I just grabbed a bunch of Walmart bags bunched them up and stuck them in all the exhaust ports, mid tape ports. They should be good enough to keep water out of there. But uh, we headed up to town now. I'm probably going to swing by, pick up a little boy, take him with me. He likes to go to the car wash, so I'll see y'all when we get there. Got my little buddy, went to my Walmart and grabbed stuff. Got some more oven cleaner. Spray her down again real quick with this. And then we're going to get her sprayed off as good as we can I figured anything's better than nothing as dirty as this damn thing is got her cleaned up and i'll show y'all what it looks like when we get to the house I'm freaking soaking ass wet with water and sweat mostly sweat um, we'll be here at the house there in about 10 minutes and i'll show y'all what it looks like it's still a little nasty but it looked a lot better than it did that's for sure accidentally knocked the damn motor over so now the oil all in the back of the truck that's nice. I guess I need to clean this thing out any damn how. This is the after. A little bit of oil on it. Dumping it over in the truck. Dipstick come out. Poured oil everywhere. I mean, it's still a little bit of grime and stuff on it here and there, but I mean, it was caked pretty good before I started, so I think it looks a lot better than it did anyhow. While I was in Walmart getting oven cleaner, I meant to look to see what kind of stuff they had for aluminum you know maybe some aluminum brightener or something clean these heads and all up but 
y'all got any suggestions on what's good to clean aluminum with aluminum heads and stuff y'all put them down in the comments and let me know maybe i'll grab something to clean them up with in the future but for now i'm gonna get the transmission drug over here and i gotta get it pulled off that motor and all and find the flywheel and stuff to go on here and try to get them bolted together i forgot all about these studs broken off one there one there i think there's a couple on the other side too so it looks like i'm about to break the welder out try to get these studs out before we worry about bolting the transmission up to it fun 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 but usually you can weld a nut on here and uh get them off fairly easy i say that now but watch it be a pain in the ass Got her out of there, put up a little bit of fight, but uh, it eventually broke loose and twisted right out. I'm gonna go ahead and get the transmission bolted up. One thing I always do to make this easier, you already got these dial pins, you know, they help a little bit, but I got a couple studs that I cut off, or a couple bolts that I cut off and made me a couple studs. Screw them in on each side, and that helps it to get the transmission slid up on there without falling off while you get some more bolts in definitely helps whenever you're doing it by yourself all right got our transmission on just missing a bolt there the block ain't got a hole in it for a bolt went ahead and put that little doohickey on there I ain't never really used it but once on that ranger and comes in handy being able to tilt the motor whichever way you need it to go by just turning that up there but uh, i'm about to get her jacked up in the air we got to get the torque converter bolts in get the motor mounts on and then i gotta move a couple vehicles out of the way and Get that thing backed up and pull it up under here and see if we can get her dropped in. Obviously, we're going to need another dipstick. That ain't going to work. It's just stuck in there to keep crap out for now. Well, we got a drug up here. Uh, I think we got a brakes or something sticking somewhere because it didn't want to hardly roll. Old 300 was catching hell trying to push it. So got some brakes or something locking up somewhere, but I guess that's the least of our worries right now since we ain't got no motor. I guess I need to... Get them headers and stuff out of there. Pull that radiator and all out. We had some wasp in here. Oh yeah, they still home. Go ahead and piss them off. But yeah, uh, go ahead and pull this hood off here too. Make sure it ain't in my hat. Hit a wasp one time, the damn thing got there up in there in my hat. And when I put my hat back on my head, he stung me. There's one of them right there. But I ain't worried about them. Oh, uh, yeah, let me get all this crap out of here. Got our motor mounts there. Get them on there. And uh, maybe we can get it slid off in here before it starts raining. We got a hurricane coming in out of the Gulf of Mexico down there. So I don't know when it's going to start raining on us. You can tell it's been sitting a while. All the pine straw and stuff growing all over it. I guess it's been sitting out there probably, probably going on about two years. I'd have to look at the last video I put up of it. I think the last video I did was pulling the motor out of it. The motor that's actually in my C10 now come out of this truck. I think that was the last video I did on it. Probably about two years ago. So it's been a while. The hood pulled off. It's laying here with all the other hoods of unfinished projects. But anyway, I'm sure a few people will be wondering what kind of mounts we're using. And this is them. I don't know where he ordered them from or how much he gave for them. But as you can see, they're dirty dingo mounts. Pretty nice quality. Obviously got plenty of adjustment in them, so you can set the motor wherever you need her setting that. But uh, about to get them put on the motor there and get these headers and radiator and rest of this stuff out the way. And got our mounts on there. Left them a little loose in case I need to adjust them a little bit when we get it sitting down in there. Figured I'd set it down in there, get it positioned where it's going to be, and then pick it back up a little bit and tighten them up real good and then set it down in there for good.
like I figured, I'm going to have to go back probably with a couple inches anyhow, about two or three inches. As you can see, got the mount right here, and then where it needs to go is right there. Now, I'm, we've got to get another mount. This one ain't got the stud in it to be able to bolt, put a nut on it and tighten it down. But uh, we can at least get it close for now. So we're going to try to slide her on back a little bit until we can get a, a mount to put on it, and then we can get it exactly where it needs to be. This is a transmission that come out of it last, so the drive shaft and all we got to work for it while we get her back in the position she was in. So all we got to do is slide it back a little bit, and then we'll get her close as we can until we can get another mount. I should have went ahead and got a transmission mount before I put the motor in, but I wasn't even thinking about that. I always think about that crap afterwards. But uh, yeah, we'll have to get a transmission mount to make sure we get her perfect, but I think I can get it pretty dang close how it is. This is where I kind of need some help. I guess we'll just ease it down and wherever it sits. I'll just have to come back and check it. Alright, so I think that's pretty close to where it's going to sit. That's where the stud would be at. It's right there. So, we'll get another mount. Stick it on there. And, uh, should be pretty dang close if you ask me. Pretty dang close to where she's going to sit at. Still got to uh, tighten them back up, which I'll wait until we get another mount to put on there. That way I can set the transmission down in this place. I'll probably stick the drive shaft in it too. And then uh, we'll tighten the mounts up and put them in place for good. Not a bad fit if you ask me. Now, if anybody knows something good to clean all this up with, aluminum heads and valve covers, Y'all let me know because I'd like to at least clean them up a little bit. I mean, we ain't trying to make it no daggone show truck or nothing, but if we could clean it up, make it look half-ass decent, that'd be good with me. Get this thing mounted in here permanently, and then all the fun comes with uh, getting rid of all the old carburetor stuff. You know, got ignition systems, fuel lines and regulators, plenty of wiring to deal with. We're going to pull all that crap out and clean it all up best we can. At least we finally got a little bit of work done on this thing after sitting for two years. Almost two years. Now I just need to get my trailer tires on my trailer over there fixed and maybe haul it up to the car wash and spray it off real good. Probably wait until we get all this stuff out of the way first. And uh, we'll be working on that one here soon too. The guy that owns it ordered a set of headers. He said them come in several days ago, a week or so ago, something like that. So and they gotta go pick them up and then we're gonna use that old junk motor right there just for mock up until we can get another good one. So we got two LS swaps going on at the same time. We got a bunch of parts for that one but not a good motor. And this one here has got a good motor in it but we're missing all the other parts. So <laughs> imagine that. And my daddy's truck over there, I'm gonna try to get back on it this weekend. Oh, uh, he's got he's gonna go get some calipers and stuff like that stuff to hook up the exhaust and all So we'll have some videos coming on that rig again, too And of course my c10 over there a little bit. I'm gonna do on it But yeah, I'm in this one off here. Y'all just like comment subscribe. Stay tuned for more later